Welcome back to Timber Borners. The sun is just rising, and in the top right, you can see that a drought has started. But that means I won't plug some merch. This limited edition Beavles poster only lasts until the 2nd of June. But if you'd prefer it on a t-shirt and you're not a Patreon, then don't worry because I've changed my Patreon merch stuff and now it's going to be a thing that you can buy on my store all the time because, well, there it is. Go buy it if you want it. But now let's get into the timber borners. Do, 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 do. Yes, hello fellow engineers and welcome back to, I think this might be the last episode, the season finale of season two of the timber borners. Uh, let me know in the comments. Do you want, do you want season three? Do you want to start on a new level? Perhaps we could try like the smallest map. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. I I'm, feel like I've sort of, I've nearly run out of things to do on this. I got one more idea, but I just, I build too efficiently. All my buildings are efficient. Even the stock buildings are efficient. Very efficient. There's, <laughs> that was smoking out the tip. But yeah, whilst I remember, I need, I need to quickly, I need to turn off everything. Oh, I'm going to use the new, the new thing. So if we head up here to workers, oh, look at this. We can literally turn off like everything. So we can turn off all these details deep water pumps because we don't want them pumping in the drought because we'll lose all of our water storage. We then want to pause things that use power but only the ones that use like water power. So like over this way you can see the, the water's dried up. These wheels aren't spinning. They produce electricity. Well actually I don't think it's electricity. It's just like kinetic movement. So I'm guessing we'll just come and pause all of these. Likewise down here they're not going to be moving. Even though there is water there it's going to be sat still. Well, there's a little bit of movement. Uh, and the same up here. Although these wheels are moving somehow. Uh, something I was meant to do before the dry season as well. I was meant to raise these floodgates. So we've lost we've lost half a height of flood water there. Uh, hopefully that won't be too much of an issue. I'm actually going to leave those four gear workshops running I think. But yeah over this way last time we built an engine. So that means all of these lumber mills, they, well, they should be cutting. They're on 0% productivity. Why, why aren't you cutting? Yeah, they've got plenty of power. They're only using 200 HP, which devs, come on, come on, guys. HP. They're not horses, they're beavers. You can literally see this beaver, he's making power down here. That number should be BP, not HP. Anyway, but yeah, we're making double the HP that we need. So that's all good, I guess. Look how much wood storage we have. There's so much. Uh, speaking of so much as well, we have, we hover over this, we've got 20. 22 unemployed beavers. That's because I haven't turned on my summer jobs. So in the summer when there's no water, all those jobs I've just paused, they go into these, the inventor huts. So we'll be clever about this. We'll go down to inventor hut in this list and we're literally just going to turn them all on. Not like that. That would be weird. Like this. Okay, then the beavers should rush over to all these and we should start seeing the roof spin. That's how you know they're working in there. Yep, the sun is setting and we seem to have survived the first day of the drought. Very nice. Next morning, as the bell woke everyone up, something seemed quite wrong. Whilst most of the beavers sort of headed on their way to do their jobs, Cody, who was age 69, nice, uh, he spotted something was up. So he moved to higher ground to get a better view. And up in his tower, he saw something he never thought he would see. Starseer, who was right next to him, also looked on in awe because over in this direction, a temple had appeared. So the beavers quickly got to work building paths, building stairs, until eventually there was a way up to the temple. Now, who would be nominated to go and investigate the temple? Could it be you, person sat on your ass? King God Emperor of Beaver Kind. I mean, that sort of makes sense. However, no, the beavers gathered in their beaver council and they decided the next beaver to grow up would be worthy of heading up there. Anyway, several beaver days passed with the statue just looking over the town until finally someone grew up. It was Tall Man Tom. So he set off on his adventure. He'd literally just grown up, no longer a child. He thought, perhaps I should take a log with me for I am an engineer. And after a long climb, once he made it to the base of the pyramid, he realized, I gotta build some stairs to get up there. So after a few more days of building stairs, they were finally completed and Tall Man Tom climbed to the top, not to just build a bench. He was actually speaking to these wise what, warriors or something, I don't know. <laughs> what are they? But anyway, they warned him of a great flood that was about to impact Beaverville, Happyville, and even Shameville. They said, like, you're missing water at the moment, well, you're going to get water. I would advise you to prepare. You need to save your beavers. Now, thankfully, they granted Tom the power of building wherever he wanted to. So, with just 1.6 days remaining, Paul Man Tom decided to get to work. And the first thing he did was hire this guy, Real Damn Engineer, a 50-year-old unemployed dam building expert that could help him 
prepare for the flood. So using their new powers, they got to work building a series of dams and levees with the aim to try and keep the flood waters out once they returned. Now the question was, had their god taught them enough about engineering? Could the self-proclaimed engineers of the natural world actually live up to their title? Anyway, the beavers spent the next day and a half beavering away trying to prepare knowing this could be the end of everything until finally as dawn rose the drought had ended and the flood waters returned firstly rejuvenating the land but then they'd be testing tom the tall man's techniques would the dams hold so water flooded into the first part of the map oh look how dark that is that is dark that's very deep and then it starts spreading everywhere oh wow this is quite cool actually this is all cool look at this <laughs> Like looking up here, we've got we got a lot of water coming in. The trouble is that water is running out. There's only 200 water left. There's no water getting in to our beavers at the moment. And since we've got this huge area to fill up, I think what we're gonna do. I mean, I mean, what what Tom the Tool Man decided to do was. Ah, never mind. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. We're just gonna lower that a little bit. Let some water in. In fact, I'll probably put floodgates there. So triple floodgates. Boosh. Lower them all. Let's let the water in. Let's turn all the pumps back on. So all the deep water pumps are back on. We do need to turn off the invent huts. No more summer jobs. There's no more learning for these beavers. It's the day of the test. All right. And then with water flowing through the Beaverville area, we I think we're going to close these up a little bit. So we do need to start filling this area. I mean, we don't need to start filling this area, but I mean, I mean, the flood waters are going to make it get filled. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. And then with a bit more dam building and a little bit of explosive know-how around the back here. Ready? Boosh! And again, boosh! Boosh! <laughs> the beavers had sort of made like a canal thing around the back there, so boosh! So hopefully, once one more layer was added to the beaver side, we should be ready to go. We're just going to keep pumping water in just to make sure it doesn't dry out. It does look a bit, well, a little bit brown down here. I think we killed all the spatter dock. Damn it. But look over this side. The water level is getting up. It's getting up there. I think what we'll do, we'll keep it running. We'll just keep modifying the triple floodgate height. And we'll see how this looks in like 20 minutes or so. All right, so here we go. Things are filling up nicely. Look how dark that water is. It's literally terrifying. <gasps> It's overtopping. Okay, good. It's overtopping the direction we want it to, which means we can raise this floodgate a bit. And meanwhile, over this way, you can see around the back of the temple, it's finally flowing down here. Man, I, I really hope the beavers have built this properly. Tom the Tool Man, real damn engineer. Everyone's fate lies in your hands. We're just waiting for this side to fill up. Oh man, it's filling up quick. It is filling up quick. You see, there's a bit of a waterfall over here. Nice. So there we have it. We survived the, the epic flood. Uh, it shows you what the power of engineering does. And if you get rid of architects, you can achieve anything. Although, what's that? Log pumper? What are you trying to tell me? Uh, what do you mean you put a glass wall up? You thought it looked better. What's your name? Architects are the best. Oh dear, hang on. Let's go have a look at what they've done. Alright, I'm not seeing any glass anywhere. I wonder what he's... Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> What do you mean you thought glass looked better? There's no glass in the game. There's only wood. Where were you, mate? Where were you, architect assassin? We could have used you. And now we're going to have to watch this. Cue the epic music. Oh, dear. No. All my hard work. Season two of Timber Borners. This is how it ends. Hey, at least this guy's still smiling. Oh man, there's so many flood warnings right now. Well, actually, I feel like it. I feel like it is actually working like a glass wall. Like yes, yes, things are flooded. I understand that. But there's no epic tidal wave like there was previously. Does anyone remember the first Timberborn season? That that ended in tears. That one. So the aftermath, as as the night set. Uh, not gonna lie, it's not it's not looking good, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Most people are underwater. The people up here, they have sort of survived. Although there's so much water going through these that they're not actually spinning. Which means the beavers in here, they don't actually have any job. Oh no, it's been flooded. It's been flooded. Who's that carrying a box still? Taco War. He's like, ah, sod this. Actually, where are all the beavers? Oh god. Oh look. They're all under there. Right, hang on, hang on. Let's just press pause. Let's just do a little bit of deleting because I just want to see my entire beaver colony. <laughs> 
They're just, they're just all in here. Look, there's Leaf Peeper. There's Felix, Duncan Brown, Vespion. They're all in there. They're all in there. Oh, Rick and Roll. He's having a little snooze on top. But they're literally crammed inside there, like it's some sort of arc. I feel like, are these buildings? Yeah, that's not even everyone. Most people are in the barracks. Granted, only the top layer of barracks is actually open. The bottom ones, they're a bit filled with water. Oh, and everyone's asleep. Well, most people are asleep. Some people are still just walking over everyone. But, oh, look at their little beaver faces. Look at that little baby. Baby beaver hanging his... Oh, that's God King Emperor of beaver kind. Oh, my goodness. His head's just hanging over the edge there. Look at these three, like, hugging each other. <laughs> All right. But anyway, as the dawn dawns, is the bell going to ring underwater? It rang underwater. And then all the beavers, they're coming out of their houses. Oh, they're actually, they're all leaving. Where are they? They're all underwater. They're all just swimming underwater. Hang on, let's get a little look under there. Look at them all. <laughs> they're literally just carrying on their days. Beavers can swim underwater. I didn't know that. Like, I knew they could swim. I didn't think they could swim. Yeah, so this whole area is completely full of water. This rear one, I think it's sort of, yeah, it's spilling out over there. And then over this side, because there's such a narrow flow, this is actually holding loads and loads of water. I I mean, thankfully, the architects, they didn't build glass dams everywhere. But if they were to, we could actually see what would happen. Because at the moment, it's a little bit wrong that Beaverville, Happyville, they're both underwater. But look over here. Shameville, with its no residents, because we died because we forgot to feed and water them. It's dry. It's dry in Shameville. How has this happened? All right, tell you what. Wait there a second. Because I am just going to delete an hour or two's work in seconds. All right, there we go. We have literal waterfalls surrounding the area. There's a beaver here that's very confusing. Confused. And yeah, Shameville, I think you're about to get it. Right, let's press play and see what happens. See you later, Shameville. <laughs> Look at it. Okay, Shameville is completely just gone. Love to see it. Yeah, meanwhile, over here, that is a lot of water. It's so dark. It's so dark. I love that these are like still being powered. Like what, what sort of power generation we got? Holy crap. <laughs> 400 HP that's making. But yeah, all the beavers just... <laughs> oh no. Oh no, it's flooding. It's flooding. No beavers. <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, d oh, that is a very dark end. That is a very dark end. I'll tell you what, how's the future generation? Where are the babies? Oh, they're all underwater. I mean, hopefully they're fine because they're sort of, they're in breeding pods anyway, right? Yeah, that is a literal very, very dark ending to this series, I think. <laughs> Oh, we had we had some good times here, though, guys. And whilst we wait for this to drain out, shall we shall we head back to season one of Timber Borners and see how those guys are getting on? It's been a long time since we saw what happened there. That also ended in a damn disaster. If I load up my last save, it's a version that's not compatible, but okay. I don't think it can go any worse than it was already going in that place. Oh yes, underwater. Oh, oh, I forgot about that tower. <laughs> I forgot about that tower. Yeah, so this is how we finished. Timberborners season one. Uh, pretty similar to season two, actually. Oh, check out the bridge. The bridge and the power bridge. Oh, yeah. And oh, yes. The shaming bridge where you can watch the shamers. Oh, had I forgot about this? The powered canal. That was a true engineering feat, uh, which somehow didn't get flooded from the looks of it. Yeah, I completely forgot about this tower. <laughs> I'm quite impressed with that. That's pretty good, man. And as this place is drying out, it's actually, it's bringing back loads of memories. Like, I'm getting nostalgia for this. Like, we had this little run where we had all the hay fields. We had to sort out our floodgates every season. And we had our little temple, a very strong shaped temple. We had the super Upa mega dam, which is now underwater. Although, actually, now it's stopped flooding. It's such a small dam. I was so proud of that. It was so big when I first built it. Oh, Good times. I wonder what season three will have in store for us. I mean, what beavers do we actually have in this? Oh, <laughs> there's, there's, okay. All the season one beavers are literally dead. Um, right. Yep. Okay, good note to end it on, I think. Don't forget to check out the merch store if you want to buy a Beavles t-shirt. Oh, and if it's still there, get the limited edition poster before it's gone as well. But I will say, peace, love, and dead beavers. Bye, guys. <laughs> Brutal end. Brutal end.